guys, this is gonna be the start of my video series. Um, so we're the start of week two um, of this whole self-isolating, quarantine, social distancing. So I thought for my clients specifically and whoever, whoever else is interested, to give you guys a bit of an insight to my day to day, to keep you guys entertained, but also to keep you guys accountable. It keeps me accountable as well. Um, so beautiful morning. Um, I, I actually can't wait to go out in my morning walk. Um, I feel like I've been quite heavily affected by um, the clocks changing, just this morning anyway. So we're about just before eight o'clock just now, but usually I've been well awake about 6.37. Um, I suppose I did sleep in over the weekend over my birthday and stuff anyway. Um, so yeah, sipping on a coffee just now with some almond milk. I'm quite hungry this morning, so I'm going to have myself a protein bar before I go, go out on this walk. And again, whenever I am out on my walk, I'm, at the moment I'm roughly walking six to seven kilometres or so. I'll stick in my earphones, listen to a podcast. A lot of people ask me what podcasts I listen to, but mine are all specific to kind of training, nutrition, lifestyle, and they're all kind of very science-based. So for your average person, just to jump in and listen to them, they'd be like, what the hell is this? So listen to whatever keeps you guys motivated and keeps you guys going. Um, I love learning more about my line of work. I love learning more about how to develop myself and how I can potentially help other people as well. So um, yeah, I'm gonna try and make this as much of a regular thing as I can. And to be honest, you guys will probably see actually how much I can actually talk, it's absolutely nuts. This is me literally just woken up as well, hence why I look like a half man, half mole. So I'll go out on my walk, get myself in that right headspace and I'll write my specific to-do list, you know, allocate specific tasks to specific time slots. I mean, you guys will have seen my um, structured routine of list or yeah, my, my routine, so to speak. But I dedicate specific tasks within those time frames to do so um, within each day. So, yeah, let's see if we can. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling incredibly positive at the moment. Let's see if we can continue that kind of feeling of those positive vibes that we're bringing in from the weekend and bring them back into the start of this week. We know that we've got at least 12 weeks. So that's at least, at least 11 more weeks from now um, of going through this. And that's pretty much best case scenario. So let's keep ourselves motivated. Let's keep our positive thoughts going. And yeah, let's keep smashing it, guys. Right. So I'll check in with you guys in a bit. I weigh myself every single day and I'll take a weekly average because we can't really determine or distinguish between each individual bodily process because there's so much going on that actually affects our body weight on the day to day then it's not exactly reliable to base our actual full body weight off of one body weight reading if you were looking for an exact measurement and a trend in body weight. So however many times you're weighing yourself per week, take a weekly average, compare that week one to then a second week. Don't take it at face value for that, just that one reading. You know, if you could, you could literally have eight less total calories from one day to another, uh, significantly less, but you could have consumed greater amounts of food volume that would heavily affect your actual physical weight um, and, you know, slow down digestion. You, you know, you may have not passed that by going to the toilet yet. So you've got to take into consideration these factors. So don't stress out over your individual weight readings on the scale each morning. Write them down take a weekly average, compare week one to week two, week three to week four, continue going on that and identify a trend from there. And yes, I've only got my hood up just because I have major bed head. So then here, part of my morning routine as well. So I'll have my coffee and then I'll have a good like, usually I'll have maybe like 500 mils or something um, of water. So first off, I have got multivitamin, I've got calcium and vitamin D, and then I've got uh, 3000 uh, milligrams of high strength cod liver oil. Usually I'll just get some sort of like 
Omegas. Um, these were the only ones that were actually available. So this is me just starting my morning walk. And as you can see, I'm fully kitted out in some black matching camo at the moment. I was gonna make a camouflage joke, but I think we're all past the, the stage of camouflage jokes. One thing that I thought was probably worth sharing is I feel like I have such good momentum going right now. And I discussed this with my coach quite a bit. Once we've got that momentum going, you don't want it to stop. Whenever you feel like you're on a roll, you're being productive, you feel positive, keep it going, add fuel to the fire. We want to take advantage of that positive mentality. I feel like whenever I'm in that state, my mind's so clear and I can come up with more ideas and I'm continuing to, to develop things, make things better, potential like, you know, additional content I can do. What can I do in the day to day that is gonna better me? And as soon as you guys feel like you're in this strong mental state, take advantage of it, keep going. That's what I always feel works amazing. You know, there's nothing worse than feeling like you're in a proper rut when it comes to anything in life. It's so difficult when you're feeling negative to try and get out of that. Should be up at the top in the next five minutes or so. Already, you can see how far I've climbed. So this is fully why it's all worth it. What have you? So as you can see, I've got one hell of a sweat going just now. Um, but that's one of the best ways to literally start your day. Getting the heart rate up, getting your core temperature up. Again, I use this as just a way to be able to use mental notes. Like I'll stick my podcast in, I'll zone out. And then before I know it, I'll get specific ideas coming to my head. You know, what I want to do for this day, I plan out exactly the tasks that I'll allocate in certain time slots. So that's the climb completed. Now around to time to go around the back. Also, just a quick note on my topic last week that was specific to implementing structure and routine. So this kind of thought just came to my head just there while I was walking up. And, you know, it is really important to have some form of structure and routine in place. But don't mistake that for being stuck specific to that routine. And by that, I mean, if you slightly stray away from that plan, it's not a negative. It's just good to have some sort of outline in place for you to work towards and allocate certain tasks towards that as well. So, yes, yeah, I mean, I guess you could compare having a meal plan versus set macronutrient guidelines where straying away from an actual specific meal plan would be seen as more of a negative, but having a macronutrient goal is specifically the more flexible in that approach. So it's good to be regimented, but not too structured. There we go, that's the sun out. How beautiful is that? So now that I've got the main climb out of the way, and I'm just on like literally straight road now, I just use this time to check in with certain clients if I've got any um, messages I'm due to reply to. I check in to see what my clients have completed on the coaching software I use. So yeah, this is the part where I'm starting to get strange looks of people like, why the hell is this guy videoing himself speaking? But quite a while ago now, I mean, like when I was younger, I used to, I used to care so much what other people thought of me, my actions, and then my happiness is just, and my kind of self-esteem and my own mental state, it just skyrocketed when I just kind of didn't care about that and just focused on myself. Like, but at the same time, you've just got, kind of got to hold yourself above that and really not care about what other people think. Generally speaking, you know, when I suppose that kind of links into 
doing your own thing and you do you again at the end of the day and not let other people's kind of judgment and I say I, I hate people that are judgmental you know judgmental in the fact that we judge you negatively based on something that you're doing to better yourself so positive vibes only guys and I think I've maybe got about like another two kilometers to go or something The difference between training at home and from what we're used to training in the gym and I've had quite a few clients struggle with some of the kind of exercise variations I'm getting to go through trying to mimic the same movement patterns of what we're performing in the gym and a lot of them are finding it a little bit demotivating that they're not very good at them and they're, they're finding it difficult to master the exercise but then we've always got to think whenever I have a client in for the first time going through um, more complex exercises you're never going to be good at the first I'm the exact same whenever I go into a foreign exercise because it's primarily neurological to begin with and we're trying to get that feel for the movement we're becoming more familiar with the movement I, I, it's as simple as practice makes per perfect and you know we can't expect to be good at something first and I'll always say that, you know, it shows us that if we're not good at an exercise, then that justifies the appropriateness of it as well. You know, if we really struggle with a single leg stability exercise, then it shows that we need to improve our single leg stability. <coughs> so you've always got to take that into consideration that just because you're not good at an exercise doesn't exactly mean that it's not worthwhile or that you, you shouldn't be trying to improve on that. So um, that was just like kind of a, a thought that popped into my head that I've been hearing from a lot of clients, but you've just got to literally try your best to be able to master the exercise. Try your best, put in your best effort. And again, as cliche as it sounds, putting in the best effort you can is all that you anyone can ask for. As long as you're trying, that's absolutely fine. And if you hate an exercise and you really don't like an exercise, then I'll always say we'll find an alternative. We'll we'll do a variation that maybe you enjoy a little bit more, but we'll still try and ensure that we follow the same movement pattern or try and achieve exactly what we set out to achieve. You guys have got to remember as well that if you don't put yourself out there, and even though it may be daunting in certain aspects, like, you know, taking these sort of videos and putting myself out there is extremely daunting to begin with. But the overall reason it's I have I have the best of intentions to do so I want to make sure that I still have that degree of relatability with my clients I want my clients to understand and realize that it's not an extremely intense unhappy <laughs> really strict lifestyle you've got to live everything that I'm doing I'm enjoying and I just genuinely feel so positive about it all the time. And I can show you near enough with ease of what it's like to be able to adhere to diet and training and to live somewhat of that positive lifestyle anyway. I always, and I, myself anyway, and I know a lot of people feel the same, but unless you push yourself out of your comfort zone and become try and become comfortable with the uncomfortable, that's where you learn the most. That's where you develop yourself the most. And do things that potentially make you more anxious than usual. And do things that are going to develop yourself in other ways. So that's exactly what I'm doing just now. Ensuring that I'm doing things that necessarily are daunting to begin with. And that would make me feel anxious. But the more that I do this, the more comfortable I'll be with it. So I want you guys to take away that same note of... If something you're finding that's daunting, something that is potentially a little bit uncomfortable, but you feel that might be the one thing that's between you and getting to where you want to be, then why the hell not just do it and try? Because 
and I'm, I'm bringing out all of these <laughs> extremely cliche um, quotes, but you know, you only live once. And why would you just not do that otherwise? Apply yourself and do something different and develop yourself further in that sense. Okay, so that is me finished my morning walks. That's about 9,000 steps I've done there. So now time to jump back into the flat, get ready for the day, and then I'll be getting my first proper meal on the go. So here we are after getting ready for the day. So now I'm getting on to my first proper meal of the day. So I love having protein oats to begin with. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm having just now. So we're gonna have two sachets of the Oats of Simple Golden Syrup. I usually prefer the cinnamon flavor. This is a little bit too sweet for me. Um, I'm gonna add in about 75 grams raspberries and blueberries. So 150 grams in total. Um, a scoop of creatine, keeping that consistent on the day to day and it doesn't taste of anything. So I can just chuck that straight in with this. And then I'm going to have um, one serving of this, which is near not, well, it's 45 grams. It's just, it's pretty much just um, two scoops. Also, so many people end up adding like an absolute ton of milk to their oats. And, you know, if you're in a really kind of um, prolonged dieting state, it's just a waste of calories at the end of the day. Use water and you can really volumize um, the oats from this. So what you can do is you can actually just continue cooking it until near enough all the water is absorbed, then add some more water, mix it up, put it in for longer, mix it up again, and you can just bulk it up further and further and further. This is one really effective dieting strategy to just increase that food volume overall. It's pretty thick now, so what I'll do, a little bit of a trick. I love almond milk. Get yourself some unsweetened almond milk and just put a splash of that in. It cools it down a little bit as well. And then I'll add my protein. There we go, now time to mix it up. So that's the protein and creatine in there. So this is me just sipping on a brew, the old finest, uh, finest um, Scottish blend. You like my cup as well. Harry Potter themed. I think everyone knows that I'm an absolute geek at the end of the day. Um, so the plan now, um, yeah, the plan now is to check in with the majority of my clients. At the moment, each of my clients are, or many of my clients are receiving a lot of um, equipment that they've ordered online. So that requires like obviously program updates. Whereas, you know, initially, and that's what a real lot of the struggle has been in the last um, one to two weeks is each of my clients have had maybe different types of equipment available. Some have maybe had, you know, a home gym, some have had absolutely nothing. So you've got to take that into consideration. And now people are receiving a certain piece of equipment. So now I'm going and just making sure that um, updating their program to make it as effective as we can. Again, we're wanting to try and maximize these results at the end of the day. We're wanting to continue in our progress and try and prevent from anything like this from impacting our results in the long run. So the plan is now to check in with clients, to I basically be sending voice messages, updating client programs, seeing how they're getting on with the current situation and how their training, nutrition, their lifestyle factors have been going on as well. So time to work away. Um, I'll be at this for the next couple hours and then yeah, I'll check in with you guys afterwards. <laughs> So guys, I've not long had, so after you will just see my last time lapse of me sitting away checking in with clients, sending voice messages, um, even a couple of hours actually on the phone too as well. Um, then after that, it was a solid hour and a half, so made sure that I obviously gave myself a good 15 to 20 minute break, um, had a coffee there as well. So now the plan is to get back into work and do some more programming. So guys, we're 
we're back in the kitchen now, so I am going on to, well, it would be meal, meal three. This is meal three now, technically. I had a protein bar, I had my protein oats, so meal three now is going to be, well, I'll say a little bit more substantial. We have majority of frozen sources. These are not ideal by any means, but they're great for slow cooker, but when you're pan frying, it's not ideal by any means. So. I'm going to aim for having 200 grams, or 150, it will be, well, actually, yeah, it'll be 150 grams of um, chicken breast. I'm going to have three of these, um, they're, what are they? Yeah, that's it. So they're basically shroom dogs. So they're like um, sweet roasted red pepper um, fennel vegan mushroom sausages, which actually taste amazing. They're high in fiber, high in protein. Um, great thing is as well is it's varied sources of protein. So it's gonna be far more, um, well, we can say optimal. Um, we're always chasing optimality, I guess, I suppose. And then we've got frozen uh, white onions that are already chopped. I've got half a red onion from yesterday. Um, we're gonna add in peas and boiled broccoli as well. And then I'm gonna have half a pack of this whole grain spicy Mexican rice. And then here's all the seasonings I'm going to be using. So this can be my main seasoning. This is a chipotle and lime, which is absolutely amazing. And then I'm going to add in some additional hot paprika and chili powder. And then I cook everything in coconut oil, but just a very little amount. Add some garlic because, because garlic, garlic's class. And then I'll add salt to taste as well. So guys, this is the finished meal. This is the final product. So I did a little bit of sweet chili sauce um, at the end, but I'd, like actually looking at the content of calories, like it's absolutely minimal. I mean, that's like, that's actually less than 10 grams of what I've added. Um, so a lot of people freak out when you're adding any additional sauces because they feel like it's unnecessary calories, but just be aware, you know, if you're adding something like mayonnaise, that's very calorie dense, whereas something that's more of a, I mean, sweet chili sauce isn't ideal. That's all I've got at the moment, but usually any of your hot sauces that are more sodium based, they're like negligible in calories. So time for me to enjoy this. So guys, that's me just finished doing some what you'd call life admin. Um, a lot of kind of, well, I've been sorting out the flat um, tidying the place up, washing up and whatever else needs to be done really, um, as well as replying to just some other emails and messages from friends and whatnot. So yeah, from now, um, I'm actually going to put together this vlog video um, and I've got quite a few clients to book in for um, video calls and some Zoom sessions as well. So that's the plan for the next few hours. So guys, just a quick tip for you as well um, regarding food sources and meal composition specifically um, when around your training window of what we would call. So if I, so I've just obviously consumed a very um, high fiber content meal. If I was then to go and exercise within the next one to two hours, because fiber and fat as well specifically, so if you have high fiber and high fat content meals, it slows down the rate of di digestion. So we're gonna have a lot of gastric discomfort from that. So it's very, or it's important to consider and place two high fiber or high fat meals prior to actually exercising. Afterwards, it's not as important, but prior to, we don't want that actually impacting our training session. There's nothing worse than actually exercising when you've near enough got a full stomach. And that's the last thing you want in that case. So I would recommend prior to training, if it's close to you, if it's like within an hour to two hours of training, try and reduce on the fat and fiber content. Um, that's definitely what I'd recommend for that, just to make sure you have no kind of detrimental effect to training overall anyway. Okay guys, so I actually ended up getting a bit <laughs> a bit lost in doing work there and all of a sudden time has flown by and that's like two and a half hours gone by. And to be honest, like basically like contacting clients and then going into video editing, like with video editing, it's a different type of like concentration. You just end up getting so like focused and zone, you, you zone out on it and then before not, and like now I'm just like, whoa, I've done, I feel like I've done way too much staring at my computer. So 
Now I'm getting ready for a home workout, so I'm gonna get some footage for you guys. So I'm just about to go through my third lower session of this training week. So I'm just gonna start with my usual warm up, and then I'm gonna get into my first exercise, which is pistol squats to the chair. final meal so a little bit behind schedule and um, it's actually after nine o'clock now I tend to usually finish eating about eight o'clock I try to anyway and um, but yeah I've just been a little bit behind schedule today with obviously being affected by clocks changing and then as well just getting kind of distracted with work really and um, I'm usually quite well to be honest I'm quite bad for overworking a lot of the time and doing a little bit too much and then just running myself into the ground so um, yep, so this is my last meal, so I'm going to show you guys what I'm cooking. We're going to go with a um, beef chilli with lentils that are currently cooking at the moment. So, I'm just going to turn this down. So we're going to go for 200 grams of uh, the 5% fat beef mince. We're going to have onions, peppers, both frozen, so easy to use when you're cooking something like this. We're going to have half a tin of red kidney beans, half a tin of chopped tomatoes. We've got 75 grams of lentils. I'm gonna add 30 grams of cheese to finish off with. And then we are still using the same seasonings as beforehand. Um, I can't get enough of this stuff, honestly. So once this is finished cooking, I've just got a few clients to reply to still. I hate going to bed when I have a few messages that are still outstanding to clients. Um, so I always try my best to ensure that I can obviously still actually um, answer them on the same day and you know just book people in for certain slots specifically now with them in for um, video calls and check-ins and whatnot. So once I've eaten this, I'll sit down, chill out, um, unwind for the rest of the day. And what I'm gonna show you guys is what I'll attach at the end as well is my total daily intake. Um, and of course, you know, this is, specific to me and what my goals are at the moment. So by no means am I saying you should be eating these exact quantities. Each of my clients, I'll always prescribe the exact quantity and if um, appropriate for the individual, I will apply um, or I would set out specific guidelines, uh, macronutrient, calorie goals, whatever, um, relevant to their goals. So by no means, again, am I saying that you should be consuming this. My carbohydrate intake slightly over today and my fat slightly under, but I'm still within my calorie goal. So the most important thing is our weekly total at the end of the day. 
So if we were under calories by 200 one day and we're over by 200 next day, and that alternated like that throughout the week, at the end of the day, we wouldn't have any significant differences and changes in body composition due to that. So the most important aspect is the total weekly intake. So we obviously want to ensure that we're cons consuming relative to our goals as best we can on the day to day. But, you know, if you don't and situations like eating out, it's not the end of the world. You know, you can structure around this much like I did with my birthday. I was actually under calories unintended the day beforehand. And then I over consumed that next day. And then the day after I actually under consumed as well, just because I wasn't actually as hungry. So the most important thing is your weekly total. Um, you know, you're not gonna gain fat or lose fat overnight, and you, just like you're not gonna gain muscle or lose muscle overnight. It's very, un, you know, it's, it's looking at the bigger picture and what's happening in the long run. So. You guys will notice as well that the way my day was planned out, that I split my exercise up. So I started off early in the day doing a form of more kind of cardiovascular related activity. And um, yes, it was very low intensity. Apart from going up that actual climb was brutal um, to the top of Arthur's seat. But I'm, sp I'm splitting them up throughout the day. It's a good idea to approach it that way because if we do the two of them very close to one another, it's not ideal um, in terms of energy availability and recovery either. So if we can split it up, we're able to actually put more effort into each of these individually and recover better from it. So it makes sense to follow a protocol like that as well.